Special thanks to Cars of Somerset for providing the Type R in this review, and of course if you want to check out this exact vehicle, if you're watching this close enough to the time of release at least, click the link right below the video in the description. If it's already sold and you want to get them to source you a car, of course you can find those details on the site as well, or if you're just curious to see what their current stock is, you can find all of that right below the video in that link. The FD2 Civic Type R, which is exactly what this is, is one of those occasions where I really wanted to like it. Because to put my cards on the table, this is a vehicle where I entered the review already liking the car. It wasn't a vehicle where I expected to be surprised or expected to be disappointed. I just thought it was going to be good, hoped it was going to be good, and already, to be honest, liked it more than the FN shape, which is the more UFO, kind of Euro-style Type R, which, of course, I recently reviewed on the channel as well, in its more limited edition Mugen form. Spoiler alert, this is worlds apart from that. Despite the fact that they both ran production at about the same time, I like this car more in every way compared to the FN2. The FN2 to me was a perfectly acceptable hot hatch, but it didn't really feel all that special to me. Sure, it's a Type R, sure it's, you know, great front-wheel drive platform as most Hondas are, but nothing really stood out and grabbed me. It wasn't one of the, the most memorable drives I've had. This one was a hell of a lot more fun. It's louder, it is faster, it's more powerful, even stock, it's rarer, and it has more of that pure JDM vibe. Now, I still wouldn't necessarily put this on par for me personally with that fantastic little Golf R32 that I drove, simply because that one has one or two things that suit my driving style more, such as a bigger, torquier engine and a wheel drive. This one, though, for those who want what these are known for, a fantastic front-wheel drive chassis, close ratio, six-speed, almost like boy racer meets rally car style gearbox, and that, of course, iconic 9,000 RPM VTEC Honda engine, well, it delivers. This is, as a number of other reviews and their thumbnails have alluded to, more of a pure JDM approach to a Type R, whereas the FN is definitely more Euro in its style. Now, the UK has a super strong hot hatch scene. It would not surprise me, in fact, if the UK had the strongest hot hatch scene in the world. We have so many. Renault, Citroën, Peugeot, Ford, Vauxhall, Seat, Skoda, Honda. So many different choices of hot hatch, and you see them literally everywhere, from McDonald's to track days and everywhere in between. When you see one of these, though, which is pretty rare, given that this is the Japanese spec and they only ever built 13,000 of them, well, it's a lot more special, simply put. Sure, when you see a Civic Type R, you notice it, but this one, this is the kind of Type R that you do a double take on. Even if you're not necessarily a Honda super fan, I wouldn't call myself a fanboy of Type Rs, but there are certain ones which I really love. In fact, the Integra DC2, the DB8 four-door variant in particular, is my favorite Japanese car period, and I have a lot of love for the DC5 as well. And I think that's one of the things that first drew me to this car. It has a very DC5 Integra kind of look, and part of me deep down likes to think of this as the only four-door DC5 Integra. <laughs> Which it isn't, but I like to think of it that way. Now in terms of its performance, interestingly, speaking of the DC5 Integra, that car is kind of a modern legend as well in its own right. You don't see too many of those in the UK. But this is faster than that, which might be surprising. You'd think that surely the Integra, the more pure, more already performance approach to just a tuned up Civic would have the edge. Well, it doesn't. In fact, this car is about three seconds quicker than a DC5 around Suzuka Circuit in Japan, and even fifth gear when they tested this against the Euro Spec FN2, the one which I reviewed more recently on the channel, found that this one was three seconds quicker as well around their circuit, which is, I believe, much smaller than Suzuka circuit, so it is categorically quicker. And despite the fact that this one adds two extra doors, a notably longer shape, and more rear legroom, it's actually not that much different in terms of weight. It's up around the mid-1200 kilo range. 
So when you couple that with the fact that it has significantly more power than the FN does, which has about 198 horsepower to this car's roughly 221, 222, that's a significant difference for a hot hatch, especially around 2007 when this was first introduced in Japan. Now it only ran production from 2007 to 2010, so you could get them up until around 2011 when they were new. In the UK, they are very, very rare. At the time of release in this video, there were none for sale whatsoever on Auto Trader, and consequently, you will be more hard pressed to find one. Now, the disadvantage of that is it means people can kind of ask whatever price they want, and somebody will probably pay it. So, if you're looking to find one for cheap or just for ease of purchase, well, then an FN2 or a previous generation EP or even maybe an EK, but probably not, will be easier to source. Or even an Integra, to be honest, will probably be easier to find in the UK at the moment. So this is very much a speciality car. This is the kind of Civic Type R that you buy, not because you're considering which one to buy, but because this is the one you have to have. It's that kind of car. I'm happy to say, though, if you must have one of these, you're not going to be disappointed, because even as a non-super fan, and as I've said a number of times, certainly not a fan of manual gearboxes, even I enjoyed this car a lot. The sound alone is fantastic. The handling is interesting, because sometimes I would describe it as being maybe a little bit too light, but then you realise, actually no, it's just got endless grip and you just have to get used to the slightly different steering profile compared to what a hot hatch would have. And I think part of that is due to the sedan shape compared to more of a traditional dumpy little hatchback. Now in terms of actual performance, top end speed is around 150 miles an hour, stock 0 to 60 just over 6 seconds. So again for its time it's about what you'd expect, handling wise through corners it can easily of course give any GTI, RS, whatever a run for its money through corners, but really you don't buy one of these because it's necessarily the quickest thing around. As I said, you buy it because you just really want an FD2 Civic. It's such a uniquely specific version of the Civic Type R, which I would argue is kind of unlike any of the others. Now, more recently, of course, we've seen four-door Civics, but at the time, that wasn't really a thing, at least in these more hardcore Type R approaches. Now, in terms of the mods that have been done to this one, of course, you should check out Cars of Somerset's website down below. They've listed all of the stuff, and it has more of a focus on kind of ease of use, driver enjoyment, and cornering stuff, rather than like a, a huge turbo kit, etc. This is not a straight line tune by any stretch. Now, I will say, even though 220 horsepower doesn't sound crazy, and I'm sure this one's running slightly more due to a couple of mods, such as the titanium exhaust, but it still spun up its wheels off the line surprisingly easily. And 220 horsepower isn't that crazy. I could even feel a little bit of pulling to the left with that torque steer. So fun, well, of course, it can be and is, but don't be fooled into thinking that you can't make mistakes or be caught out because of the modest power, the front wheel drive chassis and the lower weight. The car can still catch you out for sure, and it's not uncommon for Civic Type R's in any form to be ragged and crashed. Now that brings me to the crucial point when it comes to buying one, because when it comes to values, prices and where to find one, your guess is as good as mine. You're looking for more of a specialist or a private owner who's finally moving on, so I can't give you a, a categoric sweeping statement as to where is best to find one or what kind of exact price you should be paying, but what I will say, and this is my overarching piece of advice for a lot of performance cars to be honest, is that just because this has that 9,000 RPM engine, close ratio box and fantastic front wheel drive chassis, yes, it is clearly intended to be driven hard. And it's very, very adept at doing so. In fact, they are extremely reliable. But there is a massive, massive difference between somebody driving it hard and ragging it. And a lot of owners, especially younger ones who maybe earned enough cash to finally buy their dream Type R and do whatever mods to it, well, there is a, a very real danger that not only they'll rag it, which is, by my definition, using its performance in a way that isn't really professional or to a good enough standard, you know, slamming it through gears all the time, flooring it all the time, spinning up the wheels off the line, you know, the kind of driving that gives cars like this a bad name, in other words, that tends to also be coupled with the kind of person who 
won't change fluids regularly, won't check levels, won't do the kind of servicing that the car needs. So that is the kind of thing when it comes to buying one that you need to look into. In many ways, when it comes to buying something like a cult performance car, such as this Type R, and this goes for a lot of JDM stuff, you can arguably learn just as much, if not more, from the person selling it as you can from the car itself. Get them to start the car up for you. Check for black smoke coming out the exhaust upon first startup. If the car's already warm, feel the bonnet, see if they've already been running it to try and cover something up. And of course, notice if the car is cold, if they start revving up for you immediately. That's a red flag. If they don't let the car warm up and just start revving the nuts off it, that's not a good sign. Check for service history, check for receipts. If there aren't receipts, why? What's the story there? Why don't they have them? Why don't they have, you know, their own receipts, not necessarily previous owners? The oil, for example, needs to be changed about every nine or 10,000 miles. You could push 12 if it's driven more spiritedly, about 6,000 miles. So it needs to be done regularly. In other words, every year for sure. Transmission fluid every 75,000. Check for stuff like clunkiness through gear changes brakes that aren't quite powerful enough, that kind of more obvious stuff which can be a warning sign. One smaller thing which you don't need to worry about too much if you do notice it though, is a squeaky clutch. If during operation the clutch pedal squeaks, that's not an issue. Honda actually recalled them and tried to fix that, but it's nothing to worry about, so at least that is one thing you can tick off the list. Overall, when it comes to a reliable car, it's both a good and a bad thing. It's good because it means you can buy them, generally speaking, more confidently and intend to keep them for longer and not necessarily have the kind of bills that maybe some of its more European rivals and alternatives might have. On the other hand, it can sometimes be abused. If you have a car that is notorious for being super reliable and really raggable, well, some people will do just that. They'll drive it badly, not particularly efficiently or professionally, and they also won't maintain it to a high enough standard. So they'll just use and abuse it, sell it on, and don't really care about the next owner. That's the kind of thing you need to be looking for, the kind of thing you need to be worried about. Higher mileage is not a bad thing when it comes to these cars. Civic Type R's are known for having 200, 250 more thousand miles. So they are certainly capable of that, so don't be fooled by the super high revving engine. Yes, it is working hard, but it's designed to. It's very well engineered and much like a motorcycle engine, it's specifically designed to be capable of that kind of performance and those kind of tolerances and stresses. The car being driven hard or used as it was intended, as I said, isn't the issue. The issue is whether or not it's been taken care of and loved as well as that. So overall, that's it for my thoughts on this particular Civic. I absolutely love it. I think it was a fantastic car and I liked it a whole lot more than the FN2. Tell me your thoughts down below though, if you're a Honda Type R super fan, a JDM super fan, or maybe even just a fan of these specifically. Tell me that down below. If you were an owner previously or still are, drop some of your warnings or stories or just general tips for potential future owners. And of course, if you are watching this video and looking to potentially buy one, then take a look down in the comments for some of that advice as well. But of course, stick around on the channel for more reviews. I will be featuring more JDM stuff in future, no doubt. And until then, I'll see you next time. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.